Hey folks, this is Ranker with the Diablo 4 Season 6 class tier list. If you're wondering what class to play this season with the launch of Patch 2.0, the Overhaul, and the Vessel of Hatred expansion, this video ought to help you out. Diablo 4's 2.0 patch represents a massive overhaul of progression. We're seeing a giant stat swish, we're seeing an entire change to what our max level is, how many Paragon points we can get. We're also getting an entirely new class, the Spiritborn. Plus, now we also have Mercenaries as a new source of power. We have Rune Words as a new source of power. Every class is getting new skills as well. This season represents the most significant change to the meta in the game yet. So we're going to rank the classes on a scale of relative power now in this new meta. This is based on PTR, patch notes, pre-release access, and just best guesses, but this might change as always surprises, surprise new builds emerge as the season progresses. But this is what things are looking like right now. And I'll say that my rating criteria is about how classes perform in three verticals. First off, how good they are against bosses, tormented bosses for farming up uniques and mythics. Second is speed farming. So this is kind of like not pushing hard difficulty, just easier difficulty, fast runs. Whether it's in Helltide, whether it's in low level pits, whatever, this is what you're doing most of the time. And then the third criteria is just raw power. This is for pushing. This is for going as deep into the pit as possible, for just pushing the hardest content in the game. One thing I'm not factoring in is the early level experience, 1 to 60. It's so fast to level up now. Even the worst leveling classes, cough, druid, are still pretty good now. So for me, a class that is S tier is a class that has multiple builds to select from that perform well in all three of those verticals. It's not just about which class has the best build, it's about options. It's about, I want to play this class and play multiple builds and they're all going to dominate. And we'll also make mention of specific builds, what are the best options for every class. All right, we're going to start all the way down in D tier because we are down in the dumps with number six, our Barbarian. Now let's start with the positive. For speed farming, the Barbarian actually has a wide variety of viable speed farming builds. If you just want to do easy content quickly, you had a lot of options as a Barbarian. You can go with a classic spin to win whirlwind build. You can go hammer of the ancients. You can go rend if you like those bleeds. You can go with the double swing twister build. You can go leap quake now, or you can even use the new skill and go full on mighty throw. The thing is, though, when it comes to pushing any kind of harder content, the Barbarian lags behind other classes. Pretty much the only option Barbarians have for pushing in Season 6 is the Mighty Throw Barb, and even that isn't going to contend. It's not going to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best builds in the game. Barbarians just won't keep up with a lot of the other classes. Similarly, for bossing, Barbarians just can't bring the amount of damage that other classes can. They're not going to do bosses as fast, but at least... On top of Mighty Throw now, you got the Bash Barbarian, who has really good single target damage, that gives you another option here. Then coming in at number 5, but joining our Barbarian in D tier, is the Druid. So the Barbarian has like really good speed farming options, and is pretty bad at any kind of difficult content. The Druid is just kind of mediocre at everything. The Druid does have one really good bossing build, and that's the Landslide Druid. It's a really fun build, by the way. For speed content though, man... Druid just doesn't keep up with the other classes. Landslide might be good at single target, but it doesn't hold up as well in speed farming. For speed farming, you can go with the old staple Pulverize, you can go with Hurricane, Lightning Storm, Shred, even Boulder. They're all viable, but they're not going to beat other classes. As for pushing in the pit and the hardest content in the game, like the Barbarian, the Druid just can't keep up. But the Druid does have more options that are going to be at least maybe a step behind the other classes. Landslide will do okay here. Boulder and Hurricane aren't bad. You could even go with a Companion Druid if you want to live out that fantasy. Uh, you know, it's better than it's been, but you're not going to see the Druid pushing as deep into the pit as other classes. Going up to C tier, we actually have no class. That is how far behind Druid and Barbarian are. So we're going to go straight over to the B tier where we have our fourth place class, the Rogue. When it comes to speed farming, Rogue is an excellent class. Tons of options here. Ranged Rogue has Barrage and Heartseeker as options. Both are really fun. You can even go with a Shadow Step Rogue that's going to use an Umber Crux Unique. Plus the new Spin to Win Dance of Knives Rogue is super fun and great at speed farming. Great at everything. Melee Rogue is lagging behind, however. 
for pushing as far as possible, Dance of Knives is going to be up there. That's going to be the, the build you're going to see, pushing the hardest content for the Rogue. A step behind that is going to be a bunch of different bow builds for Rogue, but really Dance of Knives is going to be the star this season. Where the Rogue actually struggles the most this season is with bossing. We're seeing all of its former best single target DPS options being taken down one or multiple pegs. And again, the only star really remaining here is the Dance of Knives Rogue, and its strength really isn't single target, so it's not going to be the best bossing build out there. That takes us to the A tier, and number three, the Necromancer. We were just talking about bossing. The Necro is able to put out arguably the the strongest single hit in the game. If you want to deal a nuke worth of damage in one hit, Necro is the build you're going to do that with. Bone Spirit specifically. But also Spirit Wave Necro has emerged as another super strong build. It's also really fun. These are two really solid bossing options. The Spirit Wave Necromancer is a Bone Spirit Necromancer, but that's using Blood Wave, to, spamming Blood Wave basically, to launch its Bone Spirits. Uh, it, it's really cool, really fun. It has some pretty steep gearing requirements, but once it's online, man do I love this build. Then for pushing the hardest content, in addition to those two builds, we got a couple other options for the Necro as well. Necromancers are getting a new ultimate with Patch 2.0. That's Soul Rift. It's kind of the closest thing to the Bone Storm of the D3 Necromancer. Anyway, Macro Bio Boy on the Max Roll team has put together a Soul Rift build. It happens to incorporate Bone Spirit, <laughs> just because it, it happens to be a really good spirit dump. But overall, this is looking to be another really powerful option for pushing deep into the pit. And then lastly, you can also just go with a classic Blood Wave build that's just going to focus on the Blood Wave itself and no Bone Spirit in this one, I promise. But basically, the Necromancer is probably the class with the most number of powerful options for pushing deep into the pit. So why is it only an A tier? Well, unfortunately, the Necromancer remains slow as molasses, compared to the fastest builds in the game, at least. When it comes to speed farming, Necro is not going to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the other classes. Soul Rift, Spirit Wave, Blood Wave, all of these will be decent enough options. You can also tie in the classic Blood Surge, which, by the way, level with Blood Surge, it's super easy. Blood Surge is really great at Outer World content as well, right, for speed farming. With that, though, I'd recommend pushing towards Spirit Wave. Try it out, it's super fun. Then, joining the Necromancer in A tier is our number two class, the Sorcerer. Lightning Spear has taken a heavy hit since Season 5. But it was stupid OP in Season 5, so it could afford to take a heavy hit and still be a really good build, and it looks like it's still going to be an S-tier build. For bossing, Sorcerer can go with Lightning Spear. It could also go with the new build using Elemental Constellation. This is a new aspect. Casting Pyromancy Shock and Frost Skills conjures a matching elemental dagger around you that pierces through enemies, dealing damage after 3 seconds. The damage increases by 100% per matching elemental skill you cast. You're basically going to focus on maximizing your elemental constellation, and with it, you arrive at a really powerful single target build. Now that elemental constellation sorcerer, great for single target, uh, terrible for speed farming. But the Sorcerer has plenty of other speed farming options to accompany Lightning Spear, which is good on everything. You can go Fireball, you can go Chain Lightning, you can even go Frozen Orb. But then when it comes to pushing the pit, which basically needs a combination of single target and clear, Lightning Spear is going to be the only top contender for the Sorcerer. And it's going to do really well, still an S tier build, but that's really the Sorcerer's only option for pushing in the pit which is why the class itself is not in S tier. And that takes us to our S tier and our number one class of season six, much to nobody's surprise, I'm sure, is the new class that came with the expansion, the Spiritborn. No matter what you are doing, the Spiritborn has multiple builds that are going to excel. Now it's looking like the Spiritborn builds that are gonna have the highest output, both in terms of pushing the pit as well as against bosses, is going to be the uh, Eagle Quill Volley build, which might be the best build in the entire game at this point, or the Centipede Touch of Death Poison build. When it comes to speed farming, rather than the Centipede build, you have the, uh, the Crushing Hand Gorilla build as an option. And again, Quill Volley is just excellent at everything. Now, Spiritborn is probably where we're going to see the most surprises or the most potential for surprises, but it's only going to go up, <laughs> so it might have even more top builds as well as people start messing around with the Spiritborn. So overall, if you were to pick a single class for Season 6, you really cannot go wrong with the Spiritborn.
So that covers my tier list, folks. But what do you think? What are your picks on either best classes or best builds? Or just what are you planning to start with? Sound off in the comments. Also, if you need to get caught up on anything Diablo 4, if you've been away for a few seasons or if you're just new to the game entirely, I got a massive beginner's guide video that goes through all the systems, all the activities you can be doing. Also, folks, if you want some free cosmetics in Diablo 4, from October 8th to November 5th, you can get cosmetics just by watching Twitch streams. There'll be new cosmetics to farm up every week. You gotta watch at least three hours a week to earn the cosmetics of the week. You can watch me at twitch.tv slash Riker. Also during this time period, if you buy or gift two subs, you get this horse and four subs will get you the horse armor as well. Also folks, we're doing the Patreon banner this year. Anyone who is a Patreon supporter by October 31st at patreon.com slash Riker, even at the $1 pledge, will get your name on the shirt. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my supporters. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to join Riker's Raiders for more Diablo content.